Patty Hearst, the granddaughter of media mogul William Randolph Hearst, was just 19 years old when she was abducted from her apartment in Berkeley, California in 1974 by a group calling itself the Symbionese Liberation Army, SLA. The abduction of Patty Hearst, who was a student at the University of California, Berkeley at the time, received widespread media attention and became one of the most high-profile missing persons cases in history. After her abduction, Patty Hearst was held in a small closet for several weeks and subjected to physical and psychological abuse. During this time, the SLA made a series of demands, including the distribution of millions of dollars worth of food to the poor, in exchange for Hearst's release. Despite efforts by law enforcement and Hearst's family to negotiate her release, the talks broke down and the situation became increasingly tense. In April 1974, a tape was released in which Hearst, who had by this time adopted the name Tanya, declared her allegiance to the SLA and announced that she had joined the group. The tape caused a media frenzy and Hearst became a polarizing figure, with some people viewing her as a victim of brainwashing and others seeing her as a willing participant in the group's activities. Over the next few months, Hearst was involved in a number of high-profile crimes with the SLA, including bank robberies and the bombing of a police station. In September 1975, she was arrested and charged with bank robbery and other crimes. She was subsequently convicted and sentenced to 35 years in prison. In 1979, President Jimmy Carter commuted Hearst's sentence and she was released from prison. In the years since her release, Hearst has maintained her innocence and claimed that she was coerced into participating in the crimes by the SLA. She has also become an author and advocate for prisoners' rights. The case of Patty Hearst is one of the most fascinating and controversial missing persons cases in history. It remains a subject of debate and speculation to this day, and continues to raise questions about the nature of brainwashing and the role of media in shaping public perceptions of crime and punishment.